Jai Bhim, this movie has become a sensation and talk of the town since its release in November on the OTT platforms. Justice Chandru, who has been the inspiration for, this, for the making of this movie, has addressed students of Usmania University in the event conducted by Usmania University on importance of Indian constitution, civil rights and social justice. We had a chance to interact with Justice Chandru. Let's dive into it. How is fame treating you right now? All of the people coming over you, how are you feeling about that? All, all glory to J.B., not to me. J.B. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I am, I am happy the message has gone down well with the people. Yes. And is the title J.B. suggested by you? No. I was only instrumental in telling the old story of 1993 where injustice was done to a tribal family. I told the director the story after my retirement. He was interested in seeing the more of the uh, story, the story documentation and all that. Once he was seen the film, that he has got a lawyer who is also doing investigation, two in one. He felt that this could be a good film. So he discussed with Surya. Surya Production was willing to take the film. Later seeing the full text, Surya agreed to act. Agreed to act in a film where there is no love scene, there is no fight. There is no a flashy dialogue. He agreed to do a different story. And true to his expectation, it has taken him to an international level. And how are your family and friends treating you post the movie? I am not the part of the film at all. It is so but happened, you have I conducted the now. case. And the director wanted to uh, name the lawyer as Lawyer Chandru and brought some small qualities of the lawyer. And therefore, people now, after seeing the film, seeing the work of a lawyer, and seeing that something can be achieved in court, they feel more uh, happy to meet the real lawyer also. Yeah. So, uh, throughout your career, did you any time felt the pressure from politicians or from uh, ministers to give a verdict in a certain way? From my student days, I was a fighter. I never uh, afraid of anybody. When I became a lawyer, I was a fighter for human rights. When I became a judge, I was a judge dealing with number of human rights cases. I never felt any pressure, any uh, threat. And uh, because I am known to be a fighter for human rights, and nobody ever dared to touch me. I did not have security. I did not have police in my house. I never moved with police. I went all alone. Nothing happened to me. That is only because the people loved me. Yeah. And uh, what made you come into law and what made you choose human rights? After my degree course, I uh, didn't want to do any course. I just want to do uh, full-time uh, politics. Yeah. But later I realized that if you learn a trick, if you learn a trade, it can help your people. Yeah. So I chose law as a career. When I finished law, I decided that I will use the law for the common people. And I continue to use the law for common people for 30 years. And later, seven years as a judge, I helped the number of people. Because I learned the law in a correct way, yeah. and I knew that law can get some relief. It will not change the society, hmm. but it will bring some relief to people. Hundreds and thousands of workers, I got relief in court. Hmm. Hundreds of thousands of prisoners, I got relief in court. But without that, they would have suffered more. Yes. I won't say that I can change the society, but I can help in my own way, like everybody helps in their own way, the society. Yeah. As a lawyer and judge, I serve the society. Yeah. Was being a lawyer easy or a judge is? Being a lawyer was easy to you or a, being a judge was easy to you? As a lawyer, Chandru, I was a fighter. I was a judge, Chandru, I was a giver of judgments. Okay. Both are uh, different roles. Both roles are like. So one important question where, uh, where we are getting the reservations based on caste. So by giving the reservations, we are separating the community, separating the caste. Why do we have to separate based on a caste? Why, why can't we separate based on an income and then all, give opportunities to them? All people are equal, yes. theoretically, but they are not equal. Practically. So when this country started on a millennium years ago, differences were there. There are natural differences. There are man-made differences. It is Manu Shastra which divided the society into yeah. different castes. 
Varnashrama is a curse on the society. There are some people who do not even belong to any ashrama. They are our nurse. Now, when society was segregated, certain people got the best of education, best of employment. Majority people did not get it. So, reservation is an active, yes. proactive measure by which you bring people on an equal platform. You cannot make a man who doesn't have legs and make a man with full two legs to run together. They are two different people. Yes. Even if you go to a horse race, the horse which is fat and the horse which is lean, they will not be allowed to run together. The lean horse, they will put sandbags mm. so that the weight is same. Mm. Then the race will be there. So in this human race, when people are allowed to compete, people who are not fortunate enough, they should be given some upward relief so that they are equal. People who have benefit of education for 2,000 years, people who don't have education even for one year, people who are educated for generation, people who are first generation, they are not equal. Yes. You can't say go together. Mm. So equalizing, unequals cannot be treated equal. Yeah. Equals can be treated equal. Mm. In this society, there are unequals. So for the unequals, you put some handicap. That is reservation. Okay. Reservation is not against anybody or segregating will caste. Reservation is upliftment of all people by giving them some sub, some support. Yes. By which they will be competing. Yes. And now why did you give economic reservation? There yes. are well of people. Why economic reservation? The well of people can see, afford from If them. you see the cutoff mark in bank exam, yes. economically reservation poor, lost to them. Mm -hmm. Then why? <coughs> if they are so meritorious, why can't they come on their own? Mm -hmm. So therefore, there is a matter to be discussed and talked. Yes. How far reservation will continue? How long reservation will be there? Reservation will be in which post? These are all matters for policy to be decided. But reservation basically is a good concept which is called affirmative action. Even in America, for the colored people, for the uh, non-Americans, there is some support system in universities. Mm. Reservation is there in different forms and different places. Is it being misused? Is it being misused? Everything is being misused in this country, which is not being misused. Even okay. television is being misused. Yeah, there are paid news. There are paid uh, news are being broadcast. There are slanted news. There are support to ruling party. Therefore, misuse, when there is a use, there will be misuse. Yeah. But if the misuse is more, then you address the issue. Yeah. So, if the use is better, then you are allowed to use. One last question, sir. What advice would you give to the upcoming lawyers or the, or the students who are getting into law? For the lawyers, I will tell only one thing, that it does not require a six-pack body. <laughs> the six-ounce brain has to be kept sharp. You should be thorough with law. Law is your instrument. If you are able to be thorough, you can help thousands of people. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sir Thank you. Thank you, sir. This has been a great and healthy conversation with the real hero, Justice Chandru. Apart from all of this, he also mentioned that change doesn't come from one film. Change should come from every individual in the society. This is Jeevana from Journalism and Mass Communication Department, Osmania University, signing off. <laughs>